Looking for a password manager? NordPass safely stores all your passwords and helps you generate new ones. The autofill feature saves you time when logging in and synchronizes across all your devices. Visit nordpass.com forward slash legendvd to get the best offer or use code legendvd at checkout to get an additional month for free. Hello and welcome to another Explorer gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at Mono Red Aggro, and this is the exact same list that I featured a few months ago in my Introduction to Explorer video, where I featured six different deck lists, and people have been playing this deck, and it's doing quite well, currently sitting at about a 60% win rate according to these stats on Untapped, as one of the best builds of Mono Red. So I thought I would take it for a spin today, bringing back some memories of Annex equipped with an Ember Cleave from a Standard's Past. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At one mana we've got a powerful addition in Kumano faces Kakazan, which will deal some damage, eventually put a counter on our next creature and transform it into a 2-2 creature with haste. We've got two copies of Foundry Street Denizen to kind of round out our one drops, and it's quite synergistic in a deck that's playing with Burning Tree Emissary, which lets us play multiple creatures in the same turn. We also have Karizef making Ragavan, which will also pump up the Denizen, so just another often two-powered creature at least that can get in some early damage. And and then Fanatical Firebrand gives us a bit of removal as it can tap Sacrifice to deal 1 damage to any target, and then can also maybe finish off an opponent, especially with a Torbran in play, at which point it will deal 3 damage instead. If we sacrifice it with an Annex in play, it can also leave behind a Seder token, so there's quite a bit of synergy with it. Then at 2 mana, as we mentioned, Burning Tree Emissary gives us those explosive starts, especially if we have multiple copies. And then Robber of the Rich can provide card advantage by exiling cards of the top of the opponent's library, and since for mono red we can very easily empty your hand to enable it and then two copies of Karizaf as another powerful creature that's also very good at enabling cards like ember cleave as we'll have multiple attacking creatures just from the one card so we can discount ember cleave and get it down then we can also use the stomp of a bone crusher and cast it as a three mana creature annex another staple of these red aggro decks increases its power based on our devotion to red which is also where cards like a goblin chain whirler come in handy dealing one damage to each opponent and each creature and Planeswalker they control when it enters. A 3-3 first strike for 3 mana is also quite good in terms of stats, especially when we can increase its power with cards like Castle Emberth, or potentially a Torbran letting it deal 5 damage worth of first strike essentially, and that will also increase our devotion for Annex, great at killing 1 toughness creatures like Lenor Elves, which are also quite popular in the format. And then of course we've got Torbran, another payoff for being a mono red deck, and this will let our Chain Whirler deal 3 damage to each creature when it enters, so it can be a one-sided sweeper essentially. Cards like Kumano now deal 3 damage as well, and as we mentioned Firebrand, so a great card if we can get it down and get a few attack steps in. And then our Curve Topper, Ember Cleave, remains a very busted card, can flash it in, giving one of our creatures plus one plus one, double strike and trample, and then even if they answer our creature we can still move it around, but putting an Ember Cleave on Annex can often be game over on the spot. And then our mana base also has a few utility lands, as we mentioned Castle Embereth to pump our team, also quite powerful with the tokens from Annex, if our opponent wipes the board we can still maybe finish them off with our Seder tokens enhanced by Castle. Then of the Bugbear, a creature land, also great against control, 14 mountains and then Ramonap Ruins can also maybe burn an opponent out if they're low on life. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a very nice hand. Kumano into Robber, Annex plus Amber Cleave. The old standard combo, basically. Even have some fancy lands that come into play untapped. Facing a black deck with turn 1 Thoughtseize. Yeah, they might take Robber here to take us off a turn 2 play that benefits from the plus 1 counter. And then hopefully we'll find another 2 drop. All right, I'll take a Firebrand. Opponent at 15 already. And Aetherborn, that is kind of a roadblock. So I'll play Annex. And then... Yeah, we could attack with Etching. If the opponent blocks, I can use Firebrand to finish off Aetherborn, or we can wait until we can Ember Cleave. Do I want a 2 for 1 myself, but we do get to make some 1-1s one in the process. I think that's fine, because we do have Castle to eventually pump the 1-1s one as well. Okay. 
And I kind of suspect removal on Annex anyway. So then I want to get rid of the 2 3 Death Touch lifelink so the 1 1s can keep attacking. Opponent passes. Torbrain, a great draw as well. So now I'm probably in favor of Torbrain, which also pumps Annex. So now they face a tough decision do they kill Annex or Torbrain? And potentially leave us with a bunch of leftover tokens. I guess our opponent doesn't kill either here, cling to dust just to draw. And even a sweeper here doesn't do it with Annex leaving behind a bunch of 1-1s. One sign in blood down to two. And another sign in blood, a classy way to go out onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing a Gigantha deck, potentially Sacrifice. And our hand is a little bit lackluster with five lands, even though Burning Tree is nice. This hand's just too light on action. Much better. And if we are up against a Sacrifice deck, how good is Chain Warler? I mean, it's never bad. I think we can afford to bottom a land here. And I might make it Ramon Up Ruins, since my life total could be under a bit of pressure when facing a Gigantha deck. And then if we draw third land, great. If not, we're probably drawing spells we can cast. And then Kumano into one of our two drops. And then we have another two drop in case we don't hit our land for Chain Warler. I think that's better than putting Chain Warler on the bottom and then drawing a couple more lands. And yep, red black confirmed. And Thoughtseize, another reason to hang on to more spells. So we have a replacement two drop if they take Kari's F, and we even drew a backup copy. Well, probably fine to play her now then. Or we could go for the Hasty Robber to get immediate value. But if they took Kari's F, it's probably better to replay her. Okay, so Grixis, potentially a Phoenix deck. And then for now, just Robber Smash. Could potentially, like, attack, and then opponent might fear Chain Warler finishing off Ledger Shredder, and so they wouldn't block. But better to just play another hasty creature and attack with all. Opponent at 9. And next turn we can play Chain Warler. Don't have any other rogues. So if they have some cheap removal here, we could be in a bit of trouble. An opt is fine. And strangle on the robber, so we don't get that free card advantage anymore. And a cling to dust as well, put on back up to 12. And now holding a 2-4 Lencher Shredder. So, yeah, I can attack with Etching just to get two damage in. They killed Etching. Thing that's probably still okay just to push some damage. Otherwise, they just block the monkey. And now they might fear a burn spell finishing off Ledger Shredder. Puts them to seven. And then I'll play my land in case we can activate then next turn. Hoping for something like an Ember Cleave. Sedgemore Witch can start gaining them life. Sadly, a tapped land. So, can probably still afford to attack. Pwn is at three. And play tapped den. But now the pests are gonna be a problem. So really needs an Ember Cleave to trample over. Another Chain Whirler would be okay. Eaten Alive gets rid of Karizev. And Ledger Shredder now at 3-5. Just a land the draw. So don't think an all-out attack is all that beneficial. They eat Chain Whirler. And then they probably just chump Den with a Pest, eat a 1-1 Goblin with a Sedgemore Witch, and that's it. 
So, do I even play the lands? I don't think that even benefits me. I'll just pass. In case of another thought sees, who knows. So for now, Sedgemore Witch gets to make more pests. See a young Paramancer, another card where Chain Warler can be quite backbreaking. And a village rides to draw. And is Rapuno going to start attacking? Still hanging back. Well, there's Embercleave, which I can play here. So might as well go for it. We would have a 4 power double strike, so I can take out both Shredder and Sedgemore Witch. And I should probably put Shredder first in case they have two 1 mana spells to put an extra counter on it. Okay, that worked out. And then now every creature equipped with Embercleave can be quite a threat. Another Witch. Annex isn't bad. Play that and equip. Might see another Village Rites, Deadly Dispute instead. So our opponent's digging for removal, and they're gonna need it here, otherwise Annex threatens a lot of damage. Another Ledger Shredder's fine. Of one mind, a nice one mana draw to, as they control both human and non-human. So our opponent's deck is going off, let's see if they find an answer. They do, claim the Firstborn. Ouch. And then we might see a Sacrifice effect, get rid of Annex. We're at 14. Ooh, we get Annex back? Okay. So the game's not over yet. And then Robber has to be better than Activate Den here, or is it... Yeah, we can find a spell we can cast with it, increases our devotion for Annex. And we can even consider from earlier, but don't want to cast it now, otherwise our opponent gets to connive and potentially grow the Shredder. Okay, so Robber blocked by the two one ones, that's fine. And then Annex can take out Ledger Shredder, bunch of one ones. And then still trample for six. So this leaves our opponent, I guess, alive thanks to double strike, because it would gain a life of the pest before regular damage. So I don't think I can prevent that. But Annex stays in play. And then now we could consider, in case we find an answer for the um, pest tokens, interesting, another Ember Cleave. Don't quite have the mana to cast it, otherwise I could have cleaved a robber. Don't think we need another one. Torbrand's not bad. Alright, so our opponents will gain two more. And we can draw two. And a Chain Warlord is going to be a great answer to the Witch. Well, this game has gone on longer than I thought it would, but somehow Embercleave keeping us in the game. And Torbrand into Chain Warlord will deal three to each creature. So that's probably going to be too much for them to handle. And our opponent explodes before even having to show them what we have left. And yeah, that's the power of Embercleave for you. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Got a nice 1, 2, 3, 4 curve. And some individually powerful cards along the way. Could still improve if we pick up a Burning Tree Emissary to let us double spell on 2. And we'll see what we're up against here. Blue-black. 
Don't expect Kari's F to survive. But yeah, we've got our lands. Having a creature land in this matchup would probably be pretty good. Although Faithful Mending maybe points towards like an Esper Greasefang Parhelion deck. Just discarding Faithful Mending. Okay, so we get to attack with Karizef. And a Chain Warlord to the board. And next turn Torbrain could represent lethal damage. So hopefully they spin their wheels some more without affecting the board. Opponent passes. I'm just gonna go for it. Make them have whatever interaction they need. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, just as simple as that. One, two, three, four. Game over. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems okay. Just need an extra land or two. And then we can combine the powerful Annex alongside Embercleave. Torbran also no slouch. Facing what could be mono blue spirits with a snow land. And we want to trade Denizen for Sailor. Yeah, that's probably all right. That way they maybe don't get a Curious Obsession going. They can also pump it with other spirits, so it's not going to stay 1-1 forever. Even though we could wait to maybe get an extra token out of the deal. Okay, Firebrand's also not bad. Just going to Annex and then attack. Make sure we get our card from Robber. And now a token as well if they trade. Opponent takes it. Alright, so we're probably going to see some Curious Obsession action here on Sailor. Both attack. And the race is on. Opponent probably holding a fistful of cheap counter spells. And so yeah, we can potentially bait those out with Firebrand. Since we can also Ember Cleave now. Opponent with a Cutthroat, well, they activated our Tramp card, Embercleave on Annex. And that's 14 Trample damage, and our opponent explodes. So yeah, the Cutthroat did not quite work out, but maybe they just didn't have any counterspells left. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Turn 1, leaning Kumano. And then turn 2, Burning Tree into Firebrand. Up against Yorion, so presumably control. So being off to a fast start is vital. Opponent shocked themselves with Watery Grave, so either they've got a Fatal Push or they have like a one mana card draw spell they want to cast. And Fatal Push it is. That's too bad. Still get in for one. Opponent foretells. Not sure what that could be. Maybe they're Esper and this is a Doomscar. But that's a problem for later. Can play Roundup Ruins, Annex, Smash. And it also gives us a bit of Sweeper Insurance. And we even have Castle to go with all the tokens. Uh huh, I see. Maybe a Sultai deck playing maybe the Ultimatum. Well, for now we can just activate our castle to pump the team. Could also play backup annex just to make a whole bunch of tokens. I think I'd rather just pump with castle. Or we can let damage happen, play backup annex in case they have removal for the first one. Pumping would be kind of underwhelming. Alright, let's just let damage happen then. Play our backup. And then now pumping castle next turn would be lethal if they don't have a sweeper. And our opponent explodes, can have a quick peek at the foretold card, maybe an Elrond's Epiphany. If they're playing like an ultimatum build. Yep, on to the next one. We are on the draw, hand is keepable. Kumano, turn to burning tree, maybe a second Kumano. And then a chain whirler to clean things up. Facing black-green. 
Could maybe see our Lenor Elves at some point, which we can kill with uh, one damage. For now, just a second land. It's going to be a Boseju killing our Kumano. That's aggressive. Okay. So we get to ramp here. And then can't quite go Burning Tree into Chain Whirler, but we can go with Burning Tree into double Kumano. And then next turn have a huge Chain Whirler. Maybe this is a fight rigging deck. Nope, just some sort of Sultai deck, yeah. Fight rigging confirmed with a shakedown heavy. Now, Chain Warlor still only deals one damage, so Burning Tree would not have a profitable attack. But I've got a feeling that our opponent's just gonna take it here. Since their shakedown heavy is quite valuable and we could easily have a stomp. I guess not. Okay, that's too bad. So I guess they don't really care about Shakedown Heavy, which probably means they don't have a Fight Rigging in hand. Just another Shakedown Heavy. And it's gonna stay back. Okay, so even if we pump with Castle, the Etchings don't really get to attack. Could attack with Chain Whirler, have our opponent double block. And that would just be a trade for a single Shakedown Heavy. So it doesn't really benefit me, I don't think. So yeah, we're kind of at a standstill. And that turn to Boseju actually kind of worked out for them. It's gonna be a Lenor Elves. A little bit late to the party. So I can sacrifice Ramanap runes if I had like. And that's certainly an option since even if we draw Ember Cleave, I can still play it for five mana if, let's say, just a Chain Whirler or to attack. Okay, that's a fine draw. So now I could attack with a 5-5, five five. they double block, I guess we still only kill one Shakedown Heavy with it. So maybe it's just Chain Warlord pass, and then next turn attack with Castle. If we had a little bit more mana we might have been able to play Chain Warlord and pump with Castle, but even with an extra land that would not have been the case. So your opponent's with a Reservoir Kraken, another large creature, and their Torbran. That's what we have been waiting for. So we can play Torbran. Now our opponent doesn't have any profitable blocks on our Chain Warlords at least. And we can tap down Kraken using Torbran, give them a 1-1, attack with the team, and then the 1-1 probably chumps the biggest Chain Warlord, and we'll see what else they do. So a trade and a chump. Bone falls to nine. And yeah, I hope there's no fight rigging into something crazy here. Just an Elder Gargroth. Pretty scary card, but we might be able to overpower it thanks to Torbrain. So is there any point in tapping down the Reservoir Kraken? Opponent can gain three life when Gargroth blocks. I can pump with Castle, although they can block the etching profitably. Although let's say they chump the biggest Chain Whirler, block etching, then gain 3 up to 12. After we pump with Castle, Torbrand deals 5, Chain Whirler deals 6, so that's 11, not quite enough for lethal. So maybe etching doesn't attack then, and we just send a 2 Chain Whirlers. And then I could maybe block Gargroth on defense, or we can leave a Chain Warlord back. It's interesting. Don't think we tap anything for the Kraken. Send it to Chain Warlords. And we'll see what happens. Put on double blocks. Okay, so we'll take out Gargroth. And uh, let's see here. Yeah, just trading for Gargroth is fine. So question is, do we still want to pump with Castle? I think we do, just to get in a little bit more damage with the other Chain Whirler. Okay, 
Okay, so your opponent falls to three. Another Gergroth, okay. That starts adding up. Firebrand. So now what we can do is just firebrand the opponent's face. Alternatively, could have uh, tapped down the Kraken and then used firebrands to finish off the 1 1 so we can clear that blocker. But this seems easier. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Our hand is a little awkward with the castles coming into play tapped, but I'm gonna keep on the strength of Kumano into double robber, and then at least uh, Den will be untapped. Turns one and two. All right, turn one Kumano, and we'll see what we're up against here. Being on the play also makes robber better, as we have fewer cards in hand. Don't mind seeing Fabled Passage. And get in for three here. A robber also decent in multiples, as that means if they answer one, the author can maybe still help us cast a card we exiled. And all seeing Arbiter. So maybe a reanimator deck. Wouldn't be able to get to six in quite some time here. Just a tap land. And we could go for Chain Warler, although I don't mind playing another Robber either. In case we maybe draw Torbrand, we can play next turn. Gross Barrel, so maybe just a Ramp deck. Opponent already at 9. And next turn we could also activate Castle if we'd like. And our opponent explodes, yeah, so just a nice quick start on the play. Got the job done. Alright, we're on the play, and is alright, especially if we can put Stomp to use on turn 2, which I guess is less likely on the play than on the draw, so kind of want our opponent to have a 1-drop we can take out, but we can always just Stomp face. So not our most powerful cards individually, but an Ember Cleave doesn't really care too much about our early start, as long as we have some creatures to play. All right, now Kumano is probably a better play than Stomping Face. And we can just cast a Bone Crusher as a creature next turn, facing Junt, maybe Sacrifice. Opponent passes, there's Torbrain. So we're just going to attack with a team, play Bone Crusher, most likely. Opponent has their own Bone Crusher, that's fine. So that might make it a little bit more difficult to get the Ember Cleave in play. Although next turn, once Kumano transforms, we'll still have three attackers, so three mana is enough for Ember Cleave. And on a five power Bone Crusher, that's gonna add up quickly. So hopefully they just play Bone Crusher as a blocker. It's gonna be a Riveteer's Charm instead, yeah. Actually a pretty nice answer here. Now our turn looks a lot less exciting, just Kumano and uh, attack for three. So the Riveteer's Charm definitely saved him. Now we're hoping for land four so we can play Torbrain. It's gonna be a Courier's Briefcase, making a token. Given that they're playing Bone Crusher, this cannot be a Transmogrify deck since this is a creature. And our land awkwardly comes into play tapped. So no Amber Cleave, no Torbrand this turn. That's very disappointing. Just have to pass it back. And yeah, now we're gonna fall behind if we can't keep this up. Five mana. Not sure how high their curve goes, if we can expect to see some dragons. It's gonna be a Shadow Skull taking out both creatures. Killed the 1-1 one -one on the way out. Well, now our both Embercleave and Torbran are quite lackluster without a board presence. Kinda hoping Bone Crusher attacks so we can attack back for four with the transformed etching. Although they might be afraid of Den of the Bugbear getting activated, which is a reason for them to keep back a blocker. All right. Could also attack an Ember Cleave, which may be better here. Of 
spawn on blocks. And we don't lose our etching, trample over for three. And keep our Torbrand safe in hand. Land comes into play untapped. For Vorinclex, Monstrous Raider. Well, it's gonna just trade for an etching here. Let's see, if I play Torbran, attack with etching, they block. We would deal five in first strike, and then not sure how it works with Trample and Torbran's ability, but uh, either way, it's probably the play here. Opponent forced to block. And then, yeah, we can assign one, two, tramples over. And it's actually four thanks to Torbrain. Opponent's at three life. We've got a lethal Torbrain in play, plus double den. And the Ramonap Ruins can also deal some damage. Although Ruins is colorless, so it won't deal four damage with Torbrain out. Important to note. Opponent just cycling a bunch of lanes. And they seem pretty dead here. Can activate Den, play Kumano. Kumano also deals three with Torbran out. And that does it. So yeah, it looked sketchy for a second there. Opponent with a nice comeback. But luckily some of our broken cards like Embercleave able to claw us back. So yeah, overall, pretty fast and brutal games playing Mono Red Aggro in Explorer. The deck's definitely beatable if you've got some cheap removal. Some of the mid-range decks are able to kind of keep pace and eventually overpower the red aggro deck. But even when you're behind, you can always top deck one of those powerful rares and mythic rares. And you still get those quick and easy wins if the opponent stumbles or doesn't curve out perfectly. So if you're looking for an aggro deck in Explorer, I can definitely recommend Mono Red. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.